Welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about three different technologies. 360 video, virtual reality, and augmented reality. And I feel like there's a lot of confusion with these different technologies and there's a lot of overlap, which I think causes the confusion. But my job and my goal is to try and clear that up today. So I'm going to start with 360 video, and that's basically the idea of capturing footage in every single direction. All right, and yeah, it sounds futuristic because it is. We're in the future, and you can go and get a 360 camera today, and I'm going to talk about it. 360 degree video is typically recorded by using either an omnidirectional camera or a special rig of multiple cameras. The resulting footage is stitched to form a single video. The process is done either by a camera itself or through specialized video editing software. The history of 360 degree video is rooted in early panoramic photography of the 1850s. In 1851, the horizon of San Francisco was successfully captured using a series of photographic plates. About 100 years later, in 1958, the first 360 degree camera that used 35mm film, called the Japanese Panorax Zai-A, was created. The technology steadily evolved over the course of the 20th century, to the point where in 2010, scientists invented a camera that can take pictures and film in 360 degrees and reconstruct the images in 3D. Today, there's an entire market of 360 degree cameras available, such as the Ricoh Theta S, 360 Fly 4K, Samsung Gear 360, Kodak Pix Pro, GoPro Fusion, and many more. There's even been films that are shot in 360 degrees, such as 2014's Zero Point. YouTube officially launched the ability for users to view and upload 360 degree videos a couple of years ago, and Facebook quickly followed suit. If you haven't checked out some of the 360 degree videos on YouTube, you should because they're pretty cool. When a video is playing, you can drag on the video to change your perspective. When you combine this with live streaming, you get real time 360 degree footage, and this has been done with music concerts. You could even pick up a Google Cardboard or Samsung Gear VR kit to allow for control of directional view based on head movement. All of this can get a bit more complicated when you consider 2D versus 3D. Essentially, there is 2D 360 degree footage, which is a single feed being displayed to both eyes, and there's also 3D or stereoscopic 360 degree footage, where there's an individual video feed for each eye shown at slightly different angles to give the illusion of depth. This is also known as parallax. Think of it as the difference between watching a regular movie at the theater compared to watching a quote-unquote 3D movie, where glasses change the content of each eye, giving the illusion of the movie having depth. Consider that with a 360-degree field of view, and you have 3D, 360-degree footage. So, what about virtual? <laughs> virtual reality, rather. Virtual reality is the idea of basically putting some sort of helmet on doesn't necessarily have to be a helmet um, that's that's what it is right now but basically entering a world that's usually interactive where it's an artificial world and it tricks your brain into thinking you're in a different place so you could actually give yourself a different body if you wanted to but that's virtual reality it's defined as an immersive, interactive experience generated by a computer involving the simulation of three-dimensional, 360-degree environments. I like to think of virtual reality headsets as headphones for your eyes. The uses of virtual reality today are growing and growing, and they include video games, storytelling, therapy, education, training for military and space, and much more. The history of virtual reality begins in 1838 with a type of stereoscope invented by Sir Charles Wheatstone. It demonstrated how when two pictures simulating left eye and right eye views of the same object, the brain will fuse the two and accept them as a view of one solid three-dimensional object. Wheatstone's stereoscope was introduced the year before the first practical photographic process became available, so drawings were used. And I just want you to think about that, that people were looking at 3D images before photos were invented. A century later, in 1939, the Viewmaster stereoscope was created, containing image pairs through rotating cardboard discs. 
1960 saw the first example of a head-mounted display called the Telesphere Mask, and in 1968, the first virtual reality mounted display that was connected to a computer and not a camera was invented. Towards the end of the 20th century, virtual reality headsets were sold more and more on the consumer market. In 1995, a company called Forte released the VFX-1, a PC-powered virtual reality headset. In 2001, the first PC-based Cubic Room was created. And in 2007, Google introduced Street View, a service that shows panoramic views of an increasing number of worldwide positions. It also features a stereoscopic 3D mode introduced in 2010. Also in 2010, Palmer Lucky designed the first prototype of the Oculus Rift, boasting a 90 degree field of vision that was previously unseen in the consumer market at the time. In 2014, Sony announced Project Morpheus, which was its code name for PlayStation VR. Also in 2014, Google released the template for a papercraft stereoscope called Google Cardboard. A year later in 2015, HTC and Valve Corporation announced the virtual reality headset HTC Vive and controllers. And finally, we come to augmented reality. Now, this is the one I think that is the future. I think they all have a place, the, the three of these technologies that I'm talking about, I think they all have a place in history, and maybe in the future, but I think augmented reality is really the one that we are going to, like, it's the one that's going to change our world the most. Because it's essentially the idea of, you're, you're not entering an artificial world, you're staying in reality. Okay, but you're overlaying digital input over over the physical world. So it'd be like having um, some type of Iron Man visor. Unlike virtual reality, which creates a totally artificial environment, augmented reality uses the existing environment and overlays new information on top of it. There's really not been a breakthrough AR product yet, but I really think that in the next few years there will be. Now. To go back to the beginning to look at the history of AR, well, you're also sort of looking at the history of VR as well, because there's a, a lot of overlap, but in the 1990s, AR began to branch out and clearly become its own branch of technology. In 1992, Louis Rosenberg developed something called Virtual Fixtures, and this is one of the earliest functioning AR systems. In 1998, the first in 10-line computer system is broadcast by Sports Vision, casting the first virtual yellow marker during a live NFL game. In 2000, Hirokazu Kato created the AR Toolkit, which is an open source software library that uses video tracking to overlay computer graphics on a video camera. In 2009, Esquire magazine prompted readers to scan their cover to make Robert Downey Jr. come alive on the page. In 2013, car manufacturers began to use augmented reality as a sort of new age vehicle service manual. And a year later in 2014, Google announced shipment of Google Glass for consumers, attempting to start the trend of wearable AR. In 2016, Pokemon Go was released, which is an augmented reality game. The game has been credited for popularizing augmented reality, and I really think that we're going to look back in time at Pokemon Go and mark it as a monumental step in the growth of AR. The same year that Pokemon Go came out, Microsoft released a development kit called the HoloLens, an augmented reality headset. This thing really looks awesome, but it's still relatively pricey when compared to virtual reality headsets, for example. Another AR headset called the Meta 2 Developer Kit is on its way. And like I said before, I think we're going to get to the point where it's not just augmented reality headsets that people put on, but actual contact lenses that add digital input to your eyes. Or, you, you, if, you, if you think about it, at some point we might bypass the eye entirely and relay visual and sensory input directly to the brain. So, you just think about that. I don't mean to overwhelm you, but I'm just trying to give you a little taste of the future. Um, yeah. So my attempt with this video was to try and clear up the three different technologies of 360 video, virtual reality, and augmented reality. And I hope I did my job. So, I hope you all... I also hope that you, all, you have a wonderful day and you take care. Have a good one.